All right, welcome back, everybody. Darius Frost coming at you here with an icy rain build guide. Uh, talking about the submachine gun, the KV SBR Icy Rain. It's a really good submachine gun. Uh, builds very strong, very versatile, and can also be very complementary to other builds if you're running in a four man group. We'll go over all that, show you the build, show you it against the, uh, the dog boss. Shadow Hound, and uh, we'll get into it. So first things first, the KVIC Rain. What is it and why is it good? Uh, for every crit hit rate, you you get a 40% chance to trigger a Frost Vortex. When a Frost Vortex is created, it auto-reloads 15% of its bullets, and it allows one additional Frost Vortex. Uh, so you want a high crit rate build, which I've set up a pretty decent build here we'll go over the uh the armor pieces i'm running a three-piece shelterer set two-piece lone wolf and a frost tactical vest so the shelterer i'm running the hat mask and gloves it allows me to have a 15 percent status damage reduction eight percent elemental damage and for each weapon hit it grants one stack of deviant energy Every stack of Deviant Energy grants 1% elemental damage, and that can stack up to 20 times. Reloading removes half the stacks, but we should theoretically almost never reload. Uh, it, it very rarely reloads in practice, and there's some tricks to keep those stacks from falling off without actually reloading while getting a full mag. Um... So I'm not going to have the highest damage numbers on a dummy, given my mod choices. We'll go over those in just a second here, and you'll see why. Uh, but in practice, it works really well. So on my hat, I'm running the Deviation Expert. It does reduce my range, but it increases or my range, but it increases my fire rate by 10% and gives me 20% status damage. Ideally, you want a Deviation Expert that has status damage on it. Um, mine are not rolled well. Uh, I, I'm still searching for good mods. I'm waiting until Pro Mode releases to do that. But uh, ideally, you want status damage on this. Damage against Great Ones or Elites. Um, max HP is never bad. Crit Rate, Crit Damage... Um, mag capacity these are the attributes we're looking for i got lucky with this one and had several uh, you know three of the four as decent attributes so i actually rolled it up i'm going to try and find a better one when pro modes launch but here we are uh on my mask i'm running lingering frost but you could ideally you could also run uh obliteration I'm not 100% sure which one is the better option right now. But the fro the Lingering Frost I'm running is a Lingering Frost Talents, which means that top attribute will be an elemental damage bonus. And this says for the, the longer the duration of the Frost Vortex, the higher the Frost Vortex final damage, up to plus 60%. Uh, so this one here rolled elemental damage and status damage on it with mag capacity and a max HP. Those are all ideal roles on there. I could have gotten a little bit better choice, you know, possibilities um, when upgrading. It, it didn't roll great upgrading. Hopefully I can find another one as good with Pro Modes launch and have higher starting um, choices. This one here, it started out gray, blue, gray, blue, I believe. So my upgrades it might have even been gray blue gray green so my upgrades didn't roll the best uh, but again obliteration could be a good option here if you're do if you're clearing trash so the more enemies that are inside frost vortex the higher the ultimate damage uh, I went lingering frost especially when you're getting to elites and bosses this one should prove out a little bit higher damage in my chest mod, a lot of people will use things like these flame resonance mods for the straight strat status damage. 
I chose to go with Quick Comeback. I got one that had talents on it. Uh, I also got lucky to have mag capacity on there. I do want to roll. Do want to find a better one of these in hard modes or in pro modes and roll it up. But when you use a healing shot, you gain 20% movement speed for two seconds, and you refill the magazine from your inventory up to 100%. So this is my trick for getting a full magazine without actually reloading, because this doesn't trigger the reload mechanics. It just heals you and tops off your mag. So in practice, when you whenever you need to heal, you go to full mag capacity and never actually have to uh, do your reload. Let me get back to where the mods went. There you go. Uh, in my pants, I am running Bullet Siphon. It gives weapon damage plus 5%. Every 5 bullets consumed in the mag... Grant plus 4% weapon damage, capped at 20%. We fire a lot of weapon, uh, fire a lot of bullets. So this uh, this increases our weapon damage as we go down. There are other options you could be running in here, like Deadshot. Um, if I had a good one, I might actually run Deadshot over the mag, uh, over the bullet siphon, because this gives our crit damage up, and we do have a high crit rate. So there's certainly possibility to run that. Uh, as I said, by no means do I have the optimal mod setup. If anybody has a has, has better options, please comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, in the gloves, we're running crit boost for the 15%. I've looked at running crit amplifier as well. This one could be a good option if you can make up that extra crit rate somewhere else because this will straight boost your crit damage for a little for five percent less crit rate uh, i i find i tend to run a little bit lower on the mag capacity when doing this uh but i'm also not usually running foods that help out we'll go over those towards the end of this but i've gone with crit boost uh again not a very ideal setup You'd want uh, elemental damage and things like that on here. But I haven't gone really rolling for these yet. Uh, at least not until pro modes come out. In my boots, I'm running slow and steady. Grants me a nice solid 10% melee weapon and status damage right off the top. And when my HP's topped off, I get an extra 10%. Again, not going to be the most ideal. There are some others that will grant you, like, uh, Covered Advance, for example. When you take no damage for 4 seconds, you get 20% status damage for 30 seconds. Um, but as an SMG build, we're close to range. We're going to take hits. Um, I feel this one here at least gives me the 10%, where I may not always get this bonus. So those are the mods I've gone with. As for my cradle, I've gone with the automatic weapon enhancement, which grants 20% damage when holding SMGs, reloads 10% of the magazine upon defeating an enemy. When clearing trash, this is excellent because you're always keeping topped up. We also have Deviation Master for when we get into boss fights, we pull out our, our Deviant and uh, it gives us an additional 50% damage against the deviants while the de uh, while our cradle is, is out. Um, I have agility on here, so after rolling you get 15% damage reduction for 4 seconds. I also have rapid aid, which reduces the cooldown of healing items by 30%, increases the healing effect by 15. Uh, again, helps us keep topped off on health and off on, and on our magazine, given our mods. We have Tactical Combo in here, which is weapon damage plus 25% after switching weapons or reloading. Uh, when we do need to reload, this kicks in. We can also do a weapon, a quick weapon switch and come back to grant extra weapon damage. Uh, we have Status Enhancement, so after hitting a weak spot, status damage plus 25% for 3 seconds. Uh, really great when we can just tag a weak spot, go back to body shots, and go back and forth. 
takes a little practice, but is a nice little bonus. We have sprint in here, so our movement speed's a little bit higher without reduce without consuming all of our stamina. Helps us, you know, not get hit so much. We have sustained su suppression when killing an enemy with continuous damage. It increases continuous damage by 20% for an additional 10 seconds, stackable up to three times. So when clearing trash mob mobs, excellent, excellent bonus for us. Uh, as far as my deviant, I am running the polar jelly. I got lucky enough to find a 5-4 polar jelly. These can be obtained from the cargo shuffle. Uh, the cargo shuffle operations. Really, really good boost to our damage. You'll see that in action I throw it down against the shadow hound, and it helps really burn the boss down. Now, foods... You have some options. Ideally, you want to try and run honey glazed meat. So you're going to want to set up a garden and grow yourself some deviated aloe for this one. This allows us to increase crit rate by 15% when hitting enemies affected by frost vortex. So it gives us a nice sweet boost to our crit rate. And then the whimsical drink gives us 25% status damage bonus. Another really good one here. Uh, this requires deviated saffron. So having a good garden, really, really important. Um, I, have a good, I have a video about gardening. I shall uh, link it down below. Go check that out. Helps you get that set up. I did not run either of these buffs when running the Shadow Hound. I was uh, I, I had the canned meat and a corn ale running when I did it the first time. We'll run it again here in a minute. And you'll see, I'll switch out those buffs and you'll see just how effective they can be. Take our whimsical drink, our honey glazed meat, and shadow hound hard mode. Here we go. See here we have still have our food buffs running. There we go. Now they're displaying properly. And here we go. You can see we're just reload we're just constantly getting our ammunition back. Running the boss pretty good. Get rid of his ads quick. Oop, wasn't paying attention. Ads are gone. There you are. Now got immune. Gonna get his shoulders. One, two, take out his floating guys. Back on the boss, he's up in the air. It's the ground. Throw a jelly on him. And look at him go down. He's got immune. Shoulder. Shoulder. Hit, heal, back full mag, and he had to pause last second to go immune one last time, and there he goes. You see, this thing just absolutely melts bosses. Not my best run. But all in all, really quick, we've done the boss, and this was on hard mode. You can see here's our Shadow Hound level 50, solo battle, 818,000 damage done. Real quick, real clean. Got 
got hit a couple times, but uh, to be expected. So as I said, there's a lot of good synergies this build has. Anybody else that's in the party, if they also ran, run that honey glaze meat, they'll get that 15% because you're throwing frost vortexes all over the place, uh, tagging those enemies up and letting other people get their high crit build. So builds like an outsider build, a last valor build, those are both high crit rate builds. This just helps them out even more. Um, the whimsical drink again just straight extra extra damage we'll go back to the base here real quick and I'll show you on a target dummy exactly what I'm getting all right and here we are we're back at the base target dummy in front of us now when I'm whenever I'm doing this I like to do a 20 second straight pull on the target dummy just so I have good comparison uh, with other builds. You know, everybody's got a different mag size, everybody reloads at different times, has different strategies, but if you go 20 seconds versus 20 seconds, you get a nice base comparison. So I'm going to do a 20 second run. I still have my food buffs. Um, and then I'll do a 20 second run with the jelly out. So here we are, no jelly. Back up just a little bit. And you're going to see me, I'm going to tag the top and go down to the body. Tag the top, go down to the body. If you get good at practicing that, it helps during fights because you're looking for the weak spot back to the body and it lets you keep more hits on target. So here we go, 20 seconds. In three, two, one. There we are, 20 seconds. You saw I was re averaging right around 19 and a half to 20,000 DPS, depending on procs. Total damage about 421,000. Give a quick reload here. So, that's with our food buffs on. Here's going to be our 20 second run with the jelly in three, two, one. See our damage numbers have gone right through the roof. 67,000 I saw there for a second. That's 20 seconds right there. 67,000 DPS, about 1.4 million damage in 20 seconds. So absolutely just melts things when you get that polar jelly. As I said, I'm running a 5-4 polar jelly. I've got that stashed upstairs here so you can see it for yourself. 5-4, no deviation traits. I'm still in search of that nice 5-5 five five with some good deviation traits, but I'll take the 5-4. Regens really quickly. Just an excellent build all around. I, I would definitely rank this as an S-plus build. And you never have to reload. So, hope you like it. Again, if you have any suggestions on on mod setups, I'm still tweaking and hunting for that best setup. Uh, I'm not looking for best setup on a target dummy. I want setup in you know for for the everyday use, which is where I've gone with things like this chest mod here that uh, gives you the movement speed, the, the the refill of your mag every time you hit a healing shot. Just keeps you more uptime on the boss. It really does. Um, or even just trash mobs in general. You're going to take hits. Let's face it. This just helps you out. 
So, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe for more videos. Catch me live here on YouTube or over on Twitch. I'll leave the link down below. And uh, hopefully, we'll catch you in the next build. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.